Hello everyone and welcome to another series in the Intel Extreme Masters Season 2 group stage. We are back in Group C and we're going to watch the uh, reigning champion go at it for the second time in this group stage. It is Todd, the French human spawning here in red in the bottom left spawn position of Turtle Rock. He starts with the Altar of Kings and the Barracks and his opponent in this best of three is going to be Rob. The Russian Orc player who spawns in the top left spawn position in yellow. So both of the players have so far played one best of three in um, this tournament with Rob being able to take down fire with two to zero uh, somewhat convincingly and uh, therefore he has the chance in this best of three to catch up to Grubby to be uh, up at uh, six points after his first two best of threes and he starts with the blade master to try and do so whereas Todd has uh, already faced Grubby on uh, play day number one and he was the one losing that best of three with one to two so Todd so far in this season has not been able to win a series yet so he's got the chance here to yeah finally get uh, started in this tournament scoring points and uh, he's got a chance to catch up to Rob and Fire who already do have three points in this group. So yeah, AM against Blade Master. Rob is uh, playing the second burrow with a regular timing and by the looks of it even a shop as well before the text are not cutting any corners just going for the standard build. Todd with a peasant and a footman out here. Let's see if this one is going to be full-on scouting or not it looks like he isn't he's just turning around here perhaps checking the area for a scout peon but he doesn't find him since he's on the right hand side so Todd starting to creep his green camp Rob is also gonna start by some creeping not gonna get aggressive immediately pulling uh, the grunt here having his blade master in a decent back position saving himself a bit of uh, HP on that hero but uh, he's willing to take damage on both these units right in the beginning so by the looks of it, he's gonna go ahead and <clears throat> be somewhat po passive in this early game. Just um, yeah, given the fact that after this one, Gloves of Haste, by the way, he's gonna have to um, fall back and eventually pick up heal salves. Whereas um, Todd is given a free level 2 here by his opponent. Um, he's gonna be able to kill the second giant sea turtle here he's picked up a metal of intelligence and slippers of agility here uh, by the looks of it he had no idea where the blade master was um, trying to fake attacking here making it a little bit harder for a blade master to do the back step to finish the turtle but of course since the blade master was on his side of the map he um, didn't have any chance to get that lasted so he's picked up slippers of agility as well decently equipped blade master for this early time in uh, the match orc tech is slightly ahead and todd is actually pulling militia here to creep the natural expansion super greedy creeping he's got no dust yet and he doesn't have boots obviously since they're only gonna be available in just a second but by the looks of it he might be getting away with it since rob is scouting everywhere but not the natural expansion todd is even letting one of the militia go down here and the gargantuan sea turtle not quite level three i think for uh, Todd, but yeah, the Gargantuan Sea Turtle is down. He's getting the greater heal potion, which for a fragile hero like the AM is, of course, going to be very helpful. The Blade Master now coming in with the boots, trying to make the best out of the situation. He's gonna get at least two, I guess, of those uh, peasants killed. One, two, and yeah, thanks to some decent Blade Master positioning, even the third one. The AM in the meantime did pick up the Boots of Speed as well. Doesn't want to be an easy target for this Blade Master. And with the Boots of Speed, he is not going to be one. Falling back uh, behind the forest right now. Blade Master doesn't really have too much he can achieve here anymore. Tech still have a while to go. Let's see if Todd is going to be able to quickly grab the level uh, 3 somewhere. Perhaps with uh, Water metal and a couple of militia here, but then he already used so much militia time and he lost a total of four militia. Keep that in mind. So uh, his lumber economy is going to be uh, quite screwed when he, once he uh, reaches tier two. 
and it looks like he's not gonna wanna go ahead, go ahead and invest any more time into creeping. He's going to apply pressure immediately. Rob, on the other hand, ah, just invested another load of gold into items. So he's gonna reach tier two right now, but look at his bank. He can either get his tier two blinks or his SH right now. And um, with Todd being there right now, with a big heal potion even, uh, he's not gonna have an easy time getting his uh, tier 2 blinks done. He decides to go for the Shadow Hunter first. AM did take quite a bit of free damage here. It looks like he might be forced to use that uh, big heal potion soon if he wants to keep applying pressure. And so far it's working quite nicely. Rob is putting a lot of peons into uh, the burrows and he's not been able to set up any tier 2 blinks yet. Crit on the AM. He's gonna have to use the potion right now and he does so. He decides to use it quite quickly to apply even more pressure. Um, now one beast is coming in the back of the orc base. In the meantime, in the human base, you do see one arcane sanctum coming only, as well as the shop, as well as the mountain king. So as I said previously, Todd also doesn't have the resources to just power build the two arcane sanctums immediately once uh, he reaches tier two. So both of the players with, uh, yeah, not the perfect game economically here. Still no second tier two building. Um, SH is gonna be out right now though, and I think um, the AM is probably <laughs> gonna get quite the beating here. Hex and Backstab are hitting him immediately, but the Blade Master is taking a lot of damage as well. Shadowhunter did not chase after the AM. He's not going to be in position to cast another Hex anytime soon, and it is um, Todd who's voluntarily for the time being falling back. Catching up with his MK is still... Still not adding a second Arcane Sanctum. He would have the Lumber to do so right now, but he chooses not to. And Rob is now adding his second T2 building, adding the Spirit Lodge on top of the Beast Tree, which is now producing the first Raider. And Todd is staying close. The AM does... Uh, okay, he's not quite gonna be level uh, 3 from this one. Is he putting the AM away to give the XP to the Mountain King? Really? Now he's pulling back in. Probably he was just uh, moving away to be safe against uh, Hex and Hero Focus. The surround here is not quite being closed. The Mountain King can escape after uh, the Water Metal frees the way. Shadow Hunter is coming back in for another Hex though. Thought is chasing that one away, but the main damage offer, the Blade Master, is already there. Bolt goes on him though, and uh, Todd has passed the boost of speed onto the Mountain King, so uh, he is going to be able to get away somewhat safely. The Blade Master doesn't have another wind, uh, another wind walk remaining right now, and the slow actually by the Sorg went onto the Grunt, so uh, that did actually enable the Blade Master to continue chasing him a bit, but uh, even without slow against the Monkey with the boots, he wouldn't have been able to catch up. Shadow Hunter does still have mana for two more uh, hexes, but he decides to fall back for the time being. He's chased away Todd, I guess. Uh, Rob would like to get a little bit of time to get his uh, spirit walkers out, to get his adept training done, to get a couple of raiders, etc., just to get up to some decent levels like 3 3 and. Um, his decent, his um, aspired 50 supply army, but it looks like Todd has a bit of a different opinion. He's got two ivory towers in his inventory already, bolting one of the grunts here. The Mountain King needs to be a little bit careful. No potions on the orc, uh, on the human players, but no potions on the orc player either for that matter. And the Blade Master is looking extremely healthy as well. He's going straight for the Mountain King again with a hex, but once that runs out, the Blade Master is going to be in trouble and he's going to be using the town portal here. He doesn't get the lucky crits out to get the Mountain King finished here while the hex duration was lasting. And uh, with the level 7 Gargantuan Sea Turtle going to Todd, this is not looking all too great for the orc player here. At all, the Mountain King is going to pick up the item, which is going to be an invul potion. And the militia have yeah, turned into peasants by now as well. He's super risky with his Mountain King. Uh, Rob might be doing fine to pick up a heal potion. Ah, he did pick up a heal potion on the Blade Master. There's a speed scroll on the Shadow Hunt. He's again going for the Mountain King. He's using the big inward potion immediately. There's no mana on the Blade Master. And he's using the heal potion just in time, but he needs to escape. Nevertheless, he has the speed scroll on the Shadow Hunt and he used, needs to use it right now. Blade Master escapes at 23 HP, but he's out of the fight. The main damage output of the Orc is out of the fight. And now he's only got a bunch of Grunts, Raiders, and these two ranged units together with the Peons, who, as you can see, aren't really too big a threat to the tower here and uh, one grunt is falling here the shadow hunter has reached level two by now 
casting his first heal wave. He's got a bit of mana. The Blade Master is gonna have to stay careful until the until the cooldown is uh, ready again for the next heal wave. But Rob is losing so many units here. He's down to 31 supply. The Spirit Walker is probably going to be picked off as well if these sorcerers decide to move. But they don't even need to stun less long enough. Todd still at 42 supply, and this is looking like a very yeah, promising tower push here by Todd. The first two have come up, one has been cancelled, but there's no damage output remaining for Rob. And Todd can easily just secure this position here, build a bunch of towers, kill the shop, probably kill the burrow eventually. For the time being, he's just building two more towers. And the Blade Master, the Shadow Hunter, and the One Grunt are probably not going to be able to do all too much against the five casters that Todd has already here. The level three and two and a half heroes. The AM is getting a little bit overly ambitious, perhaps is pulling back. But yeah, now the slows are being casted and Rob is leaving the game. Todd is winning map number one. So turns out that even though he lost the four peasants while creeping, um, Todd still turned out to be ahead after his uh, level or XP advantage that he gained in the early game after the uh, large amount of time he was able to delay Rob's tier 2 buildings and um, on top of that getting the creep check at Rob's natural expansion was basically just too much to handle and uh, yeah when all of that comes together a quick follow up with a tower push was not uh, all too difficult to pull off anymore Todd wins the first map here quite clearly in the end and uh, therefore we're gonna go to map number two uh, lost temple